ਨਾ ਸਿੱਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਸੀਨ ਮਲਟੀਪਲ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਬੀਂਗ ਆਸਕਡ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਪੀਜੀਐਮ ਔਨ ਦਾ ਸੇਮ ਫਰੰਟ ਸਿਕਲ ਸੈਲ ਅਨੀਮੀਆ ਯੂ ਆਲ ਨੋ ਥੈਟ ਸਿਕਲ ਸੈਲ ਅਨੀਮੀਆ ਇਜ਼ ਬੇਸਿਕਲੀ ਅ ਮਿਸ ਸੈਂਸ ਮਿਊਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਓਕੇ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਮਿਸ ਸੈਂਸ ਮਿਊਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਨ ਵਿਚ ਜੀਨ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਬੀਟਾ ਜੀਨ ਇਨ ਵਿਚ ਕ੍ਰੋਮੋਸੋਮ 16th ਕ੍ਰੋਮੋਸੋਮ ਇਨ ਵਿਚ ਦ ਐਟ ਦਾ 6th ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਨਾਰਮਲੀ ਯੂ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟ ਗ੍ਰਾਮਿਕ ਐਸਿਡ ਰਿਪਲੇਸਡ ਬਾਈ ਵੈਲਾਈਨ ਰਿਮੈਂਬਰ ਦ ਗ੍ਰਾਮਿਕ ਐਸਿਡ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਨੈਗੇਟਿਵਲੀ ਚਾਰਜ ਅਮਾਈਨੋ ਐਸਿਡ ਐਂਡ ਵੈਲਿਨ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਨਿਊਟਰਲ ਅਮਾਈਨੋ ਐਸਿਡ ਵੈਲਿਨ ਇਜ਼ ਨਿਊਟਰਲ ਅਮਾਈਨੋ ਐਸਿਡ ਸੋ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਆਫ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਚੇਂਜ ਇਨ ਚਾਰਜ ਫਰਸਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਚੇਂਜ ਇਨ ਚਾਰਜ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਆਫ ਚੇਂਜ ਇਨ ਚਾਰਜ देयर इज चेंज इन सॉल्युबिलिटी चेंज इन चार्ज कॉजेस चेंज इन सॉल्युबिलिटी एंड दिस कॉजेस चेंज इन स्ट्रक्चर सो नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एंड हाउ डस चेंज इन स्ट्रक्चर अकर इन सिकल सेल एनीमिया वेयर इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट इज गिवन इन द टेक्स्ट बुक ऑफ हार्पर्स इन व्हिच इट इज सेड दैट इफ यू सी अ एचबीए मॉलिक्यूल इट हैज टू अल्फा एंड टू बीटा चेन अल्फा and two beta like this normal but if you consider hbs molecule the hbs may the beta chain has to keep patch so beta chain not the alpha alpha is still normal right the beta chain will now become s the s actually has a sticky patch like this sticky patch like this this is sticky patch so what does sticky patch mean the sticky patch means this hemoglobin can stick to the next hemoglobin if the next hemoglobin has a complementary patch for it has a complementary patch for it that means suppose we draw a deoxy hba deoxy hba to usme kya hoga the alpha chain will have a complementary patch like this okay the beta remains normal but alpha develops a complementary area now if i draw the same thing as deoxy hbs now think what happens socho deoxy hbs may the beta chain has its own sticky patch now because it was has changed to s and alpha has got what a complementary area like this the hemoglobin will look like this now alpha has a complementary area and s has a sticky patch s has a sticky patch here theek hai so what happens the sticky patch means this molecule will attach to the next available hemoglobin if the next available hemoglobin has a complementary area for the sticky patch has a complementary area for a sticky patch that's the, now understand suppose i take two types of hemoglobin one of them is heterozygous and one is homozygous okay let's say one is hb ss that means homozygous and one is heterozygous that means 50% in this patients hemoglobin is hba and 50% of this hemoglobin is hbs now this whole story will start only when the hemoglobin has got deoxidated only when the hemoglobin has got deoxygenated so what happens let's say the first molecule is a deoxy hbs now okay just to make it simplified let me take this as deoxy hbs first molecule second is also second is also hbs now this molecule can easily attach to this one the third is again hbs look what happens again attachment one more hbs again attachment that means this will keep on making a long indefinite length polymeric chain it is called as ss polymer it's ss polymer sir won't this happen in the as molecule let's see this first molecule is what the first molecule is the s molecule suppose this s molecule theek hai the first molecule is s molecule okay and second molecule is supposedly the a molecule now think what happens second is a molecule kya hoga socho the second molecule is not s it's a molecule now this is the a deoxy hba the question is if you say d this is deoxy hba can the deoxy hba attach here no why no because this beta chain does not have a sticky patch so this cannot attach here they both remain separate that means the deoxy hbs and deoxy hba will show no polymer formation and therefore there is no clinical features so this is very very important question guys two types of question asked does heterozygous patients have clinical manifestations answer is no they don't and what is the reason the reason being the hba hba prevents polymerization this is very very important question hba 
prevents polymerization let's come back to the hbss condition suppose i draw this is a R rbc and in the rbc in the rbc this is a ss polymer like this ss theek hai it's a ss polymer now since it's a ss polymer this area here and this area here they have rbc damage rbc damage now since there's rbc damage here what happens inside the vessels all the damaged membranes will stick to each other see this damaged membrane here all the rbc with damaged membrane will stick to each other like this because of the phospholipid damage all of them are sticking to each other when they stick the blood flow from here will reduce here this is called as a vaso occlusive crisis it's called as a vaso occlusive crisis and the effect being ischemia the effect being ischemia vaso occlusive crisis and the effect being ischemia the remember these all have the polymeric chains here now what is the effect of ischemia see because of ischemia there is pain especially in the small joints of the hand and foot very important called as painful tactilitis or hand foot syndrome it is such important finding that the first patient presents with this symptom only they don't have hemolytic anemia in sickle cell they often present with pain and pain where in the small joints of hand and foot so clinically this is called as vaso occlusive crisis the patients have number 1 hand foot syndrome hand foot syndrome called as painful tactilitis painful tactilitis most common symptom of sickle cell is painful tactilitis second see because of less blood flow the condition occurs because if the blood is not flowing properly the bacteria infection will also increase so first of all because of condition there is increase infections the increase infections it can occur to lungs called as acute chest syndrome in which the patients they often have pneumonia especially by the pneumococcus bacteria and they can increase infection of the bones especially in the joints called as osteo myelitis is often caused by salmonella typhi against the usual osteomyelitis caused by staph aureus usual osteomyelitis caused by staph aureus these are the one which is caused by salmonella typhi they are the one which cause, is caused by salmonella typhi okay they are caused by salmonella typhi so this two are very very important guys and do not miss this they are very very important acute chest syndrome lungs may and bones may they are caused by osteomyelitis called salmonella typhi remember both the symptoms here they respond to oxygen why think why because the entire thing was happening because this hemoglobin has changed to this one if so if you remove oxygen it happens this if you give oxygen reverse will happen and when the reverse will happen they lose the complementary area and so where with the s bind it cannot bind to it and hence the entire symptom is relieved simple and hence remember this thing respond to oxygen and because it is condition why because blood is not flowing so give obviously intravenous fluids so iv fluids and oxygen that the first line treatment for any case of sickle cell anemia and therefore it is called as reversible sickling reversible sickling again very very important question in the pgmes now remember all these symptoms are initially only reversible because they have not caused necrosis they have just caused ischemia and mild ischemia suppose it becomes more severe so what will a severe ischemia do a severe ischemia as you know they can lead to necrosis and therefore they can cause necrosis to the retina causing retinopathy to the brain causing stroke the kidney causing papillary necrosis retinopathy stroke and can lead to papillary necrosis eventually they can lead to a massive necrosis of the spleen and other organs causing damage to most of the body organs causing damage to most of the body organs 
what happens then is later on suppose i draw the rbc again so in the rbc there has to be such polymeric chain remember this polymeric chain is causing extensive damage to membranes they're causing extensive or severe membrane damage they're causing severe membrane damage and because of severe membrane damage water and potassium leaks out water and potassium leaks out when they leak out the rbc will now get over the polymer like this because rbc will now shrink over the polymers like this this typical shape you'll remember looks like a sickle you used to cut grass in fields like this hence the name sickle cells this rbc is more beautiful than normal rbcs so what is the problem? The problem is this RBC cannot pass through spleen. It's not deformable. And once it's not deformable, it will surely undergo extra spleen because spleen will say, Jukana padega. And it will say, Jukika nahi. Jukika nahi to marega. And when it's marega, it will cause extra vascular hemolysis. Now, will you say this is reversible sickling? Definitely not. And hence, it is called as irreversible sickling. The same thing will also occur in splenic artery with the spleen here. Okay, spleen here. The splenic artery will have all the sickle cells arranged like this, as it eventually causing massive ischemia. This will lead to massive ischemia. Okay, massive or severe ischemia, and ultimately it is causing splenic atrophy. Splenic atrophy. The name we give the for this is or Splenectomy. It is called as auto splenectomy. This is the entire pathophysiology of sickle cell anemia. So, remember initially the RBC shape is normal. It is only later on that the RBC will change the shape to a sickle RBCs. It is only later on that the RBC will change the shape to a sickle RBCs. This is very, very important. Now, let's understand. Let's understand what will happen. If there is a diagnosis block. So if you want to diagnose it, you have to do peripheral smear and retic percentage. And retic is increased. Why? Because it's hematic anemia. A peripheral smear can show you, can show you a normal RBC till now. Normal, normal chromic can be seen, but can show you sickle RBC also. But suppose it's normal normal chromic, then even the retic count will be normal. In that case, what will you do? The next test you do, if it is n by n. You have to do next test called as sickling test. In this, you add a substance called as sodium meta bisulfite. You add a substance called as sodium meta bisulfite. Add a substance called as sodium meta bisulfite. Now, once you add a substance called as sodium meta bisulfite, what happens? Once you add this substance, it is actually a reducing substance, reducing substance. And therefore, it will remove all the oxygen from the hemoglobin. And once it removes oxygen, I hope you remember that every hemoglobin will become deoxygenated, will develop a complementary patch. So suppose this is the RBC. And one of the RBC here has a sickle now. That means all the RBC will now change to deoxyhemoglobin. The deoxyhemoglobin will make a polymeric chain. And the polymeric chain will damage all the RBC and this will now become a sickle RBC like this. But suppose the RBC does not have the sickle cell. That will also extract oxygen but now the RBC will just shrink like this but will not become a sickle cell. So when you add a substance called as beta sulfide, you are inducing sickling. Why? Because you are exaggerating the pathophysiology and hence it is called as a sickling test. You can confirm this, confirm this by doing hemoglobin either HPLC or electrophoresis or surely the gene mutation analysis with family study, with family study. Among this, HPLC is very common done, but obviously this is the best one. When you have mutation analysis, this is the best one obviously, but HPLC what happens in the HPLC is called as high performance liquid chromatography, what will happen is the HBS will increase and the HBA will decrease. HBS will increase and the HBA will decrease there. 
example or treatment well as i told you the first thing you do in any cases give oxygenation with intravenous fluid the first treatment is always this secondly you can try to increase the HBF amount. So what will happen if you increase HBF amount? Think, if you have increased HBF, the HBF will, yes, HBF will decrease, sorry, increase the oxygen affinity. And if it's increasing oxygen affinity, it will take oxygen, will not deliver oxygen. If it does not deliver oxygen, what happens? It will take oxygen and hence, it will have a more oxygen state. If more oxygen state, it will not leave the oxygen and hence the HBA or HBS will not change to deoxy HBASPS and therefore will relieve the symptom. So there is increased HBF can be done by a drug called as hydroxyurea. It increases HBF and surely at the end or initially you can do allogenic stem cell transplantation. You can do allogenic stem cell transplantation. You can do allogenic stem cell transplantation. Again, very, very important. Allogenic stem cell transplantation can be done in such cases. Okay. It is about the sickles anemia. Well, this year in need also two questions have come. I hope you remember the treatment part and surely the somatophy, which is the main etiology of the sickle cells in osteomyelitis. What can also be asked is what will increase sickling? So you think what increases sickling? Deoxygenation, dehydration, infections. All of the other factors which increase the sickling. So increased sickling can be seen by decreased oxygen, dehydration, increased infections. So decreased oxygen means decreased amount of HbA. Yeah. Okay. And increased amount of HbS. Okay. These are the all the factors decreasing sickling, increasing sickling, along with increase in the ionic strength. Even though this is not very significant in our body, but yes, pathophysiologically in the lab studies, this becomes a bit important. It is called sickling, increase sickling, and reverse will decrease the sickling. Sickle anemia is a very, very important finding. The question asked on every aspect there. These are sickle cells. Okay. These are some target cells you can see here because of hemolysis anemia. Now, this is a normal RBC passing through this vessel normally. And look how have they all got sickle cells, and this sickle cell is forming because they have abnormal polymers inside them. Normal RBC has now changed to a sickle RBC like this. And eventually all of them should have these polymers inside them. This is the spleen. It is called as autosplenectomy. Initially, there is hemolysis, so spleen size increases. And then when there is splenic atrophy, the spleen size decreases. Initially increases and then decreases. Now when they increase, it is all because RBC lies in there. When the RBC lies, what do they release? When RBC lies, they release Hypoglobin, which has iron, the iron with iron with calcium and giant cells. Iron calcium giant cell is called as gamma gandhi bodies. Iron calcium giant cells is called as gamma gandhi body. They are seen as congestive synomegaly. They are seen as congestive synomegaly. It is all about the sickle cell anemia. And remember this very, very important finding. Do not ignore sickle cell anemia for any exam. It is very, very important. And I hope. It was very, very easy to understand in this way. Okay.